chart that we will be using. Remember, it moves like this. The uh, the Trinity, God the Father, is the person of the Godhead. We are zero. The three of the attributes of his a divine character are his sovereignty, his love, and his this. We now study detail. Provide for us our portfolio of invisible assets. We looked at the source of the use of portfolio. How it's used. There are really two primary assets. One is called computer assets and the other escrow assets. And these are things that God has come, that has done totally, completely in the eternity past. These have come from the sovereignty of, the love, uh, of God. And each of these provides equal privilege and equal opportunity for the believer to receive the vets which are beyond belief in the escrow account. Then in the, we add to that the part that man plays. And it's not all meritorious, but it's necessary uh, for you. If you're ever going to receive the account and uh, to utilize all that God has provided in the other primary asset, for you to be able to receive these, you must utilize the secondary person that the Holy Spirit has provided for you. And in eternity past, you must understand, eternity past, the initials God knew how you die. And therefore, in the doctrine of divine decrees, the second part of this, so that today you're a winner or a loser, not because that God's subtlety has died for you, but it's a true that what provided all these things for you, you shall decide there were things that were more important, you may sit in the contrary, the part of the list of different, and there you cut yourself off from being a winner because of your duty. Therefore, he can at least be the extra that he has to, and you end up being a loser. Now, the thing hard to understand is how if God has given us a free will that we have choice, and he no choice during the past. But that's something that's difficult to find out. And there's no human illustration Exactly. Well, that closest we can come to it, uh, the passage that I showed you in First Kings chapter 11, uh, in the situation regarding Jeroboam, uh, God offered him everything that David had. Just think that Jeroboam could have had everything that David had, except for, for the one, one thing that uh, uh, he had to give to. But all that beyond the dreams, he all that was really a different religion. He chose to reject and for he became uh, an anathema of God's life and not through Jeroboam's day as evidence of medieval and apostasy in nation. And so, uh, what you turn to do, the next time you have opportunity to, uh, let's say, to attend the class, you can make a little decision. You know that, let's say, this, uh, this, you have an opportunity to do it. How you make your decision, uh, I don't know, maybe you don't know, believe it or not, you turn out who exactly what decision you make. You make, make this decision, decision you make. That decision recorded can give the doctrines. It stands recorded there for uh, it's your uh, You have, I don't know about computers, if you have a computer, you must stand there. There, there, there were things that were in computer in the factory. Things that have all the heart, you know, uh, part of the heart. Uh, you can't change what you. That way, it's that's what the program's into that. And no matter what you do, you can't do it. Now, all built in, and that's the, the evidence of primary. God primary has everything. Nobody changed them. Those were created by God in pretty bad. There's also, there is that software. You software to have computer. I think that computer is so you. Because it depends on if, if, if you have a word processor. It can do anything, and hardware for game that the patient do for. And that can only do what that program was for. Uh, uh, he's got so it does uh, uh, cartooning. Uh, well, that's, that's, uh, I don't have, I, no matter how I will do tuning, I can't do it because my software will do it. Uh, I can do all things with my uh, print shop, but nothing like they can today. Uh, it's unlimited to speak by this, and this is somewhat comparable to the fact you are allowed within God's overall plan to be certain visions, uh, choices, actions, all those God says you can them, and he lives them, uh, uh, the fact that you have made decisions you have made uh, in the software. Plan. And so that's about as close as you come to any kind of analogy uh, today. We're talking now about the, the, these assets, these primary assets, called computer assets, which election and predestination of the two. Once again, election and predestination have to do with the unbeliever, only for the believer. We have no direction that everybody has the equal privilege of being a member of the royal priesthood. We discussed now exactly what that means. And the we're going to move now to this situation and study predestined and the privilege and the property that's related to destiny, which comes from this word. Which comes from this Greek word. P R O O R I Z O. Uh, horizo, of course, is the word from which we get the word horizon, and uh, to get the picture uh, beforehand. Pro means before. So beforehand, and if someone gets the picture beforehand, it, it is something that is determined before. And so we have the meaning to be to determine. Uh, beforehand, uh, it, it, it marks off by boundaries, uh, uh, signifying to determine. And so it is 
that we're talking about something which is determined beforehand. God determined something beforehand. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 tells us something about what he determined beforehand. For it says, he, that's a reference to God the Father, determined beforehand us. That's the believers, so this is only for believers, to receive adoption as sons. Now, we need to understand, stop for a moment and notice something. When we, you and I talk about adoption in our society, in our culture, it talks about taking a child who was generally not born into our family and by means of a legal transaction to make that child a part of our family. Uh, uh, that child becomes a part of our family, uh, the AB family, uh, by means of a legal action called adoption. Uh, that's not what is meant by biblical adoption. It comes from this Greek word, H-U-I-O-S, and uh, 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 if we add the other word uh, to it, if sun placing, uh, huios is a unique word for sun. There are all kinds of words for suns. You have the male of brephos. Uh, uh, brephos is a, is a uh, would be a child. Uh, napios would be a child. Uh, there are different words for children. This is an adult son, and how it was used uh, is, is in what uh, are even these days uh, used by the Jews uh, uh, during the uh, uh, time when a child in the family who was born into the family reaches the uh, uh, age they become bar mitzvahed. And the bar mitzvah is the recognition of son placing or the beth mitzvah. Uh, Beth being female, Barb being the the, uh, the uh, young. This is she, she's placed as an adult daughter in the family. Uh, the bar mitzvah is the is the very important service in the family of the Jewish uh, life, because at that time uh, they recognize the child as being an adult son in the family. You've now grown up, though at age twelve most of them haven't. Uh, nevertheless. Uh, that you see was God's plan, uh, according to His, uh, to the Word of God. So they are placed as adult sons. They were born into the family. They were born into the family, but now they receive all the privileges and the responsibilities of being an adult son in that family. Before that time, we excuse, says mother and dad, we have excused your childishness. No more. And they make a big deal of it. It's, it's, uh, it's a great, a lot of ceremony. This is the opportunity. The son of the daughter, he goes to the temple and takes from the Torah and actually reads from the Hebrew portion of the Torah. Now, God uh, did this for us also. God placed us as adult sons. When, and, and we have to use the word adoption. It's just the, it's the, the Greek word but it, it doesn't explain it, see. It means to be made a member of the royal family of God as adult sons. And he didn't wait till we were 12 years of age. This took place at, uh, actually, uh, this, this verse tells us, he determined beforehand, before, what, before the creation of the earth. That, the context tells us, we looked at it the other evening. Before the creation of the earth, God determined beforehand that all those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ would at that point of time be placed into his royal family as an adult son. This adult sonship is vitally important because we as adult sons are royal family of God. And that's what the first privilege that we talk about is uh, under the uh, assets, the invisible assets of predestination. That is, we are royal family. Uh, chapter 1, verse 11 
uh, goes on to say, in whom, that is Jesus Christ, we were chosen, that's election, as his inheritance having been determined beforehand according to the purpose of the one who works out the all things according to the Norman standard of his determinate counsel and will. So we'll take a few points under uh, under the uh, uh, doctrine of uh, predestination. So that you understand what we're talking about. One, predestination refers to a provision which was made by the sovereignty of God in eternity past whereby every believer becomes a part of the royal family of God thus becoming an heir of God a joint heir with the Lord Jesus Christ and all that this means it is the provision of God the Father wherewith everything that the believer needs to fulfill the plan of God is provided for him on a grace basis. Everything. If you're in the family of God, it is up to God your Father to make it provision for everything. Now see, this clue, therefore, it gets rid of human energy. It gets rid of human personality. It gets rid of human ability of any kind. Human strength. Human power. It gets rid of every kind of human effort and moves aside. It is now de de totally dependent upon the provision of the sovereignty of God for you to succeed. In other words, God says, can't lose unless you choose to be a loser. Can't lose unless you make that choice. The so equal privilege then has to do with God's providing everything that you would need to execute his plan. The equal opportunity that God has given to us is the baptism of the Holy Spirit which places us into union with the Lord Jesus Christ forming the royal family of God and making available to us a divine sphere of power by which means we can execute what he expects of us. And all this is available to all believers. Equal privilege and equal opportunity. Equal privilege says this. There are no distinctions in the, among believers any longer. There are no racial distinctions, no social distinctions. No economic distinctions, no psychological distinctions, no intellectual distinctions. Because we are all in union with Jesus Christ. It doesn't make any difference whether your father or mother was what they were. Whatever they passed on to you by means of human genetics is all placed aside as far as equal provision is concerned. Equal priv or privilege, equal priv privilege is concerned. This should eliminate all forms of prejudice from your life. You're no longer to think of yourself or someone as a member of a particular race or a particular uh, uh, social structure or a particular economic status or a particular personality type or someone who is superior to you or inferior to you. Uh, you never compare yourself with anyone else because from this point you live life and under the Lord you have equal privilege. Now, and he also provides the equal opportunity. And the equal opportunity is the divine spirit of power God makes available to member of his royal family. It's your own palace. Your very own palace that is designed for you so that if you live in this palace, you cannot help but fill it of God. And you know how that this palace contains, one, the uh, filling of the Holy Spirit. Uh, this is the power for the Christian life, too. It includes uh, for the use of promises such as rebound and uh, uh, the Three, it includes genuine humility for the purpose of teachable. 
four hittings, the perception application of bio doctrine, the motivation of doctrine. All is the first three are uh, the basic motivation. Uh, once you reach four, you move to momentum. And then he gives you mid to spiritual adulthood. And he gives you the, first of all, <coughs> God, which becomes the basic motivational virtue. Your love for God moves you on the rest of the way. It's like personal or an unconditional love for man. And, uh, and the most test terms that you can cue on to spiritual adulthood, and in spiritual adulthood you can have it, and then you become able to handle things that will control you in the angelic conflict. And so the result is found in Ephesians 1, 11, and 12, where it says, In whom, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have also received the inheritance. The inheritance is the escrow blessing. God has an escrow blessing, which he has designed personally, for you. In vitale assets, but they're for you. Having termed beforehand, there's the, the uh, prorizo, you know, something has termed beforehand, that is, your equal privilege and equal opportunity in a predestination. According to the purpose, his purpose, that's about the sovereignty of God in the provision of the escrow assets. The purpose of the one who works out the all things, everything in your life now, go to work out. This is the plan of God for your life. In forty with what? Counsel, as determined counsel, is the plan of God. He, you're, everything's good according to the plan of God. And what does the plan call for? The plan calls to bless you with the escrow blessing. Take these escrow blessing and to bless you beyond imagination. In order that, and here's the all of it, in order that you should be to the praise of His glory. That whole purpose of it, bring this glory by God. Now we move, having understood it, that the equal unity of election and predestination now is everything that God has to give us to make it for us to achieve these extra blessings. We're now going to talk these three things are entirely up to you. This depends depend upon your free will volition. So the only thing that lies between you and all that rainbow. Here is you, here's the uh which is not real, the invisible uh, assets. That the only thing between you and the bubble at the end of the rainbow is your and volition. Your you have the carry, the personal uh, and the uh, unusual uh, or, uh, 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 unique asset of the Christian of life. So let's move on to the secondary assets. These divide four areas. These four areas are between what God has for you and what you actually get. Oh, that you would get everything God has for you. The escrow account. God has signed. God has provided for it. Now he leaves all with you. It's all up to you. After I had to sing that song all the way home, I find remembrance of those words who song could be on a star. His song from the Beagle Highway. Uh, uh, he lied to uh, you, a fish, being a mule, being a pig. See, a fish can't do it, but swim can't his name, read a book. Mule Sobert Pig uh, lives in the night. Says, uh, and he, the first and second stand all uh, the alternative. Then the chorus goes on. Says, would you be a big fellow with dirt on his face? He's our terrorist. He's fat and lazy and rude. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Sing it for me. Real. Go ahead. I'd grow up to be a pig. Oh, would you rather swim on a star? Carry beams holding up a game jar. You can do it. You can get all that stuff. So sing it. Put nothing to it. Come for us. Swing it on a star. Or would you rather be a pig? <laughs> So I'm talking about the, uh, you know, the unique ass here. The point is, God made a different decision in the eternity path that he would allow man to have free will, which we call Olin. I like what we use in our children's work. Call it the decider of the soul. And it's gifted as arrow. And how you use your volition, your decider, the of your soul, depends whether or not your soul blesses God as for you. The decision for the distribution of escrow blessing is, well, there it is. You see, you don't believe it. Will he fill by God his life, or will he not? To fulfill God and resolve the problem, therefore drawing God maximum. Now, once you have done this, you are become an invisible hero. You are what God has tried to make you. You are conformed to the image of His Son. That's what he says in Hebrews chapter 8. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of His Son. That's God wants for you. And he has made every provision which is necessary for you to get from A to Z. Now, now, the volitional assets are the key to everything. For the issue is this. 
Will you make a consistent good decisions on a daily basis from a position of strength to be positive toward Bible doctrine. And every good decision adds to your assets. You, you know how it is in a portfolio uh, of, of uh, visible assets. If you have a portfolio of visible assets, you, you, they can stay there and they can accumulate. Uh, suppose you have stocks or bonds, they will, they will go up. Or you could say to the, uh, your, to the escrow officer, uh, or to the person who's, who is the, the officer in charge of your, your portfolio, you can, uh, he may call you and say, look, uh, the, uh, uh, your stocks in, uh, well, let's take GTE just because we know there are people here from GTE. Uh, your GTE stock has gone up. Now, uh, uh, um, do you want to, uh, uh, to sell uh, at this point and increase your cash available? Uh, or do you want to, uh, to uh, sell a couple of stocks and buy some more? Uh, do you want to increase your your holdings of this particular stock? Do you, in other words, do you want to use the assets that you have to increase your assets or not? Some, uh, uh, I was uh, I'm working on my my retirement. <laughs> I was really shocked when I read this stuff. Absolutely shocked. If at age 25, for 10 years, and only 10 years, I had put $2,000 a year away for those and stopped. $2,000 a year. I would have more at age 65 than if I could be gathering interest, than if I at age 35 had put $2,000 a year away from age 35 to 65. Isn't that a startling re revelation? And yet you tell a young person, start now, and they say, what retirement? They don't even think about it. I mean, it's so far down the tubes, they can't even think about it. I've got a son who's in his 30s, and he gets stock from stock sharing from the company he's with and as soon as he gets it he can hardly wait to get it he goes out and sells it to so buy an airplane ticket to fly in somewhere to see, to see somebody and I keep telling him how stupid he is to do I mean, especially the stock is in a good solid business why he should be socking that thing away and it can't do anything but go up in the future for, because it's the type of a business that's going to get more and more valuable. But see, all he could see about is, I want to fly to Texas next March. And, and when in, in April, when he comes back, that'll be over. That'll be finished. It'll be through. That's all there is. If he'd have, but he, if he had used that asset and, and built on that asset, but you see, you can't tell people. I, you know, the thing that amazed me was that if I retire at age 62, receiving 80% of my Social Security, that I will actually, if I, if I, or I, you see, if I wait to 65 to receive 100% of my Social Security, it actually takes 12 years of this to make up for the three extra years that I would get here. So it's obviously smarter to retire at 62, receiving only 80%, than it is to wait till you're 65 and receive 100%. And then they tell you this, if you wait till you're 70, you will get 100 plus percent, see? For example, if your Social Security is 600 here, maybe 800 here, it would be 1,200 here. But, <laughs> you see... You can, you can live from 70 to 80 
and you still won't get as much as you would have gotten if you started to get it way over here to 80. You, 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 people don't think these things through, see? And how would you know those things? But it takes someone who knows what they're doing, tells you this great information. So currently, my plan is once uh, my 62nd birthday arrives, I'm going to retire and say to the church, all you have to pay me is the amount of money that I can earn over and above my Social Security. So if you can hold out to then, folks, you got it made. If you could pay me my regular support until the end of April, you got it made. You're going to save a lot of shekels because I can only earn $650 a month in addition to my Social Security. That's all I can earn. So you can, you can go from what my current support is to $650 a month just like that. I may take more time off, but then uh, you, what do you want for $650 a month? No, you see the point. The, the point that I'm the point that I'm making is that you have to realize that assets, the assets that you have, can be used to increase your assets, which means that every positive decision that you make is going to add to the assets, which are already the invisible assets, in the, as far as escrow blessing assets are concerned for you. You see, because Every volitional decision means you're going to get more over here. Every time you make a positive volitional decision, it says there is another uh, escrow blessing that God's going to add. And every time you make a volitional decision which is negative, you take away something that God has over here for you that you can never get. It's gone. It's finished. It's through. Again. It's only volitional. It's not based on doing anything. It's what is your what is your volition? See, and uh, uh, God, uh, when you get to heaven and you look and you'll see in your escrow account those things, and you say, "Oh, did God knew that I this uh, this is what I have loved. Uh, I never dreamed that God would have given me this." But then God will say, yeah, but didn't Paulie tell you that it's something beyond your dreams? Paulie, didn't you tell... No. <laughs> it's beyond your dreams. Yeah, I didn't dream I could have had this. Why was I so stupid to make a negative volitional decision? John chapter 3 tells us there will be regrets in heaven. There will be regrets in heaven. I'm sorry to tell you, but John 3 tells us that. You will regret... The stupid de decision in which you decided to, for the bird in the hand rather than the two in the bush. You decided for the, for the, uh, uh, the bicycle here when you could have been driving a Mercedes over here. That's what I'm talking about as far as your volition determines. And every volitional decision adds to the assets, adds to the assets. Again, it's not positive volitional toward, toward some kind of service. It isn't positive volition to some kind of an experience. It's positive volition toward Bible doctrine that makes the difference. The consistently good decisions will add, 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 so that you're, you're really increasing the assets in your file, your portfolio of invisible assets. Well, we should be finished in the next uh, very few days uh, with this, moving on then to, uh, well, which we'll finish this up with, Paterology. Uh, so uh, the, uh, take advantage. That chart is something you'll be glad you had in the future, and I am, I'm going to get a better uh, 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 transparency made. But that chart will be in the book, and it's available to you. And those who are... Uh, not here in the class, but who'd like to get the book, it is available to you without charge. It's uh, volume one of our series on, of commentaries on the book of Galatians. It contains the, about 100 pages, the first book, and then we'll be adding other uh, volumes so that we will have, just like the book of Romans, we will have a number of volumes on the entire book of Galatians. Now let us pray. 
Thank you, loving Father, for all that your matchless grace has already provided for us, already deposited in our escrow account, already deposited into the computer assets of equal privilege and equal opportunity, so that there's not one of us who is not qualified to receive everything you have for us. And I pray that as we evaluate the decisions and the choices that we have to make, that each believer will determine to make the proper decision that will add to the assets and increase that which you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen.